All right. What's up, everybody? All right, we're going to take a look at the best of Kiss, the 20th Century Masters Millennium Collection Volume 3. Well, I'm all over the place with reading that title. I didn't know where to start, and I just went all wild on it. So this one, this one was pretty exciting. Volume 1 was whatever. Volume 2 was pretty sweet. And this one, this one I waited for. Because they kept delaying it and delaying it. And I think it was only like a year and a half or something until it finally came out. Maybe somewhere around there. I don't know exactly. But they kept pushing it back. And I, I was just like, man. And at the time, I remember it feeling like a decade almost. But it was only like a year, maybe a year and a half, somewhere around there. From the second volume to this one. And I read why it was delayed. I think it had to do with all the shifting around with the company or something like that i don't know there was something going on i remember reading something about it but i don't remember now but uh finally it came out and man i was excited 90s compilation of kiss music oh boy i was i was ready for it i was just what what from revenge and well you only had a handful of songs anyway you could do so so let's see you had from revenge and we're only going with studio albums Some from Revenge, Carnival, and Psycho Circus. So you had three albums. I was like, oh, they're going to put Hate or Master and Slave or Jungle in here. I guess Jungle. Uh, we're going to have some Unholy and Take It Off and Psycho Circus. And uh, what else was that? Oh, You Wanted the Best. All right, you had a good selection of songs there, man. A couple of albums, not a whole bunch to choose from, but you had a good handful of stuff. So I was like, yeah. I don't remember picking this up. I do remember waiting for it and finally seeing it and getting it. Um, I don't know what store it was from. It was definitely probably from the mall or something at the time. Good shot of one of my favorite periods of the band, the 96-ish area so i was i was cool about that i was like all right man because they look to me that that point in time with their old costumes but their older selves <laughs> they look pretty cool it they look elderly oh that didn't sound right not like elderly like old but like they look like what i would expect them to look like in the elder if the movie was made or whatever and uh so <laughs> If Kiss had never existed, you could never have made them up. Except, they didn't exist, and they were made up. So, you know, there's that. Uh, pretty cool revenge shot there. Freaking love that point in time as well. They look pretty cool. And so we have God Gave Rock and Roll to You 2. From the, I guess, the Revenge version there. All right, cool. Unholy. Domino. Live. All right, three, un three, three Revenge tracks. Not bad. Hate. I completely forgot they had these on here. This is pretty exciting. Okay, they did put some from uh, Carnival in there. Hate. Childhood then. I will be there. Then you got... What, they, they didn't put Jungle on there? Coming home. Unplugged. That was pretty sweet. Got to choose. That was pretty cool seeing that finally. Because um, I didn't have like the vinyl version or the DVD of MTV Unplugged. So I had always heard that Got to Choose was like a bonus track. And I had never heard it at the time. Couldn't just look it up online. Or maybe you could have. But I wasn't thinking about that at the at that time. And uh, so that was pretty cool. It didn't fit the album. This compilation really for me. But it was cool to have it finally because I was like, yes, finally, I'll never get the chance again to get this song on a CD. Got plenty of chances. Was it on the box set? I'm not sure, actually. I have to... Maybe I did hear it and I'm just making all this up right now. I'm probably making a lot of this up. Uh, not really. Memories, you know, it's 20 years ago. I don't know. Uh, Psycho Circus, Into the Void. I pledge allegiance to the state of rock and roll and nothing can keep me from you know. okay so this is actually 
like I said, I was excited for this, but I, I don't remember what tracks were on here. Um, and I don't think I actually... I, I listened to the 80s one a lot more than I listened to this one, definitely. Because I think something... like I, It was exciting, but I think it threw me off with like some of the MTV un, uh, Unplugged stuff. Not because it was bad, but it was like... You had all these like grungy style metal 90s, early 90s stuff. And then you had, you know, bow, bow, bow stuff. I was like, oh man. It like kind of just broke the middle of the album for me. Uh, cool shot there. And uh, you didn't even get the the cool like album covers back there. I mean, you got a cool shot of the band there, but like... For as long as this was delayed, they could have at least threw in a little bit of other stuff. 2006. So, yeah, man. I mean, that, let's check out that. That's a good shot, though. I mean, for a compilation, for a $10 compilation, was it $10, $12, something like that? I mean, what really could you complain about for the most part? But it was. I'm just happy it was released at the time. God gave Rock and Rock too. So yeah, you got Domino Live from Alive 3, that was pretty cool. You had at least three songs from Carnival of Souls, which was a big, at least to me, was kind of a big deal, because that was almost like Elder-ish, where they like completely ignored it. Um, but they not having Jungle on there is interesting. I, I didn't realize that, because that is one of the few Kiss songs in my area that they that I heard on the radio. I remember, with the exception of, you had every now and then the rock and roll and I, and I, I, Detroit Rock City, you didn't hear Kiss, obviously, on the radio here, but in my area where I live, I remember there was, there may have been more, but the two main songs that I heard on the radio back in the day, when albums were fresh, was, of course, Jungle from Kiss, I heard that. I'm like just a regular radio station. I was like, whoa, that's cool. Uh, and then Taste of India from Aerosmith's uh, Nine Lives album, which is 100% my favorite Aerosmith album because it came out, again, at a certain point where it was like magic to me. Whenever I saw that video for Falling in Love is Hard on the Knees, I was like, holy crap. Like, I had to have known Aerosmith before. Definitely, like... Uh, I knew, well, I knew, uh, of course, you couldn't get away from, like, crying or crazy, the music videos, but, and so I knew him from that, but whenever I heard the heaviness of Falling in Love, and then you had Hole in My Soul, but, like, I, I went out and got that album, like, immediately. I was excited. I was full-on, like, Nine Lives Aerosmith. I was obsessed with that album. It was, like, perfect. To this day, it's still my favorite one with Rock in a Hard Place probably coming in second uh because that was an odd album that i got whenever i was like super young like for a christmas present and so it stuck with me for that reason uh but and then of course and welcome to the aerosmith show uh and then i was like let down whenever just push play came out like like nine lives was there something in between nine lives and just push play i think it was like a live album but other than that like studio wise jaded came out it was pretty cool and then i got the album and i was like oh no this is not metal or this isn't heavy like like nine lives was four years ago or whatever it was so anyway what was i talking about oh yeah hearing taste of india on the radio from aerosmith was pretty cool and hearing jungle on the radio because the stations where I, here where i live just did not play new stuff even more so then now you know like now is like completely just if it's not one of three Fleetwood Mac songs or Stairway to Heaven you don't hear it um so at the time it was pretty cool anyway on with the show uh and then a couple of Psycho Circus songs pretty cool for there nothing can keep me from you that's a pretty cool addition I guess if you didn't get the Detroit Rock City soundtrack which if you didn't well I guess you really didn't miss too much but I enjoyed it I liked it it was a good set of songs we'll get to that eventually great picture here there you go the third Millennium Collection from Kiss uh I don't know why I do that I was happy about it wasn't exciting Really didn't stay lit. Whoa, did I just use a young person word? 
it didn't stay on fire for for too long with me but it was pretty cool to have i think it's about time i mean they got enough material now to release a volume four i know it's not going to happen but if it were to happen from the 2000s say sonic boom <laughs> and monster and i guess you would have some live stuff from kiss 40 kiss rocks vegas what would your track listing be for a fourth 20th century masters volume four the 2000s which i guess that doesn't count either because the only one in the 2000s was sonic boom and then the rest were in 2010s which blows my freaking mind man like it's all it's still the 2000s it doesn't feel like it's been two decades away from that man all right time blows there you go kiss 20th centuries masters volume three